What measures do you take to ensure soil retention and quality? There, there are a variety of basic strategies. So one has to do with simply with physical structures, uh, terraces and, and uh, waterways. Um, we, um, when I farmed uh, uh, 642 acres, which was, to, which was until just recently, we had uh, um, over 25 miles of, of uh, water diversion terraces and uh, many, many acres of uh, in grassed waterways. So there are physical structures. Uh, soil conservation is also obtained through um, the, the, the crop diversification and rotation that we were just referring to. Um, an, an example is the, the alfalfa. Um, it is a crop that is particularly effective in, in arresting soil erosion. And then earlier I mentioned uh, putting our most fragile lands into permanent pastures, which is another uh, strategy that almost completely eliminates soil erosion. The central thing to, say, to point out is that um, most of the land in southeastern Nebraska uh, where we reside uh, has been designated by the Soil Conservation Service as highly erodible, um, which is a designation that refers to its overall susceptibility. And that's a function of several things. It's a function of soil type, of our slopes, and, um, <clears throat> uh, and, and the hard, violent, quick uh, weather events that we have here. So uh, we, that, ne that needs to be in mind with everything that we do. And uh, but our land is, um, is also, has also been designated highly erodible. So um, that uh, is sort of an overarching concern. And, that, and, and we've talked about how that has induced us to uh, be careful with uh, the cropping sequences and to have these mechanical structures as well as uh, um, uh, as well as other procedures to, uh, to always be mindful of, of minimizing soil erosion. Uh, the, the windbreaks are uh, not only um, a uh, aesthetic, but they, they do um, slow the wind down. And you can feel a big difference in the, up in the farmyard, you know, when we're working around the, the house and the shop, just on the, the comfort level. Um, in addition to the, uh, you know, the shelter belts, uh, we try to tailor our tillage uh, system to to prevent uh, wind erosion. Uh, as you can see, the farm is pretty flat, and so uh, hills are not an issue right around here. Uh, we. Um, like to keep the farm as green as we can as far as something growing all the time and in fact this last fall uh, before the winter freeze hit uh, we basically had every acre um, i should say at least 90 percent of our acres were green we either had uh, uh, old alfalfa or new seeded we had winter wheat um, or we had um, a cover crop of oats planted on the uh, corn stubble. So, and, and we see that as not only helpful, you know, as far as soil retention, but, uh, but it's also good for the uh, soil quality. And so we, through rotation, and, and we also add, uh, you know, manures, composted manure, uh, we use some liquid fish. Uh, occasionally we use some mined minerals like soft rock phosphate, uh, ag lime for calcium, um, and just a number of other biologicals too that uh, we use to stimulate the life in the soil which uh, turns into quality. We build our soil um, through cover cropping and also with the animal um, manures that we produce with the goat dairy, we compost that and that also is being used to, to replenish our soils. So we use management intensive rotational grazing here on the farm and our whole farm is set up in a series of almost 30 different paddocks 
and we can move the cows from any one paddock to another at any time uh, based on uh, herd size, based on rainfall, um, the forage that's out there. And we really see a lot of improvement in the grass. This is based on a traditional system of when there were no fences and there were herds of bison moving across the prairies and they would come in and graze heavily and then they would move on. And so that grass that was left then um, was forced to regenerate. Put the, so it had good root system and it was able to uh, grow in all kinds of different weather. Then after a rest period then, um, the bison would be moving back through and would eat it again. So we're trying to mimic the natural system of how the grass um, coexists with herbivores. Biodynamic preparations, there are six of them. And all these herbs have long, a long history of medicinal use with, uh, with humanity. And so what the intention of these preparations is, is to bring the healing quality of that herb or that unique relationship that that herb has to its environment, um, to the compost pile. And so you take that compost and treat it with these you know, medicinal preparations, and then you're applying that compost to your soil. And that, that soil then has these qualities of these herbs, and then the plants that are grown in the soil can then be influenced. And um, even the animals and the people then that would be eating the crops from there are influenced by this you know, beneficial, uh, kind of soil, soil health um, and the relationship that these herbs bring from the compost all the way to the end product.